G'day again guys and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're taking a look again at operational strategies. Okay, and these are the things that an operation manager must do, must put in place in order to improve the performance objectives of the operations team. I.e. we're looking today at supply chain management, including logistics, e-commerce and global sourcing. And we need to be able to see whether these things, if a business implements them, will they lower cost? Will they improve quality? Will they be able to improve dependability, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, and have a look at case studies and see if they're able to do those things. Now, again, with all of these things, and it's like a broken record, but it's important because I know kids forget it. You need to be thinking about your short answer questions, but also your essays big time too. You have to be having a think about what is logistics? What is e-commerce? Define these things, define supply chain management. But the bigger part also is to be able to explain how, how is supply chain management a strategy? How can logistics be used to meet that criteria if you're going to evaluate it? How can it lower costs and so on? Define it, tell me how it's a strategy. All right. An operation strategy is something that the operations business function can use to improve the operating process. I.e., they can make the product reduce price, lower those costs, or improve quality and meet that quality performance objective. Or even reduce lead times, which again is about improving speed and using that performance objective of speed as an evaluation criteria. Supply chain management, what's that? Supply chain management, it's the umbrella heading, it's the heading. Logistics and supply chain management are not interchangeable, although most people think they are. Okay, logistics is probably the biggest part of supply chain management, but not 100% interchangeable. Supply chain management's the heading, so you wanna use supply chain management as a strategy, but parts of it like logistics, sourcing, e-commerce as well. So supply chain management, you have logistics, sourcing, global sourcing, using the global web, and e-commerce processes as well, all part of supply chain management. As I said, logistics is a part of supply chain management, as is sourcing, which is getting the raw materials. Both are equally important. Supply chain management, Again, a strategy, something the business can use to improve operation, involves sourcing of materials, these days often from global supplies, through what we call the global web. It's like a spider web when you look at a map and look at where you're getting all your bits and pieces, and includes the transportation, the movement of these materials, both in raw materials and final forms. It also includes the storage of the products in warehouses, and, the, and on top of that supply chain management, it's about the final distribution of the product to the customers. Now, due to globalization, this technology and this global influence, businesses have been able to have international suppliers and therefore a global, a global supply chain. This can reduce the operating costs and also allow for the purchase of supplies not previously available. E.g. Woolworths, but it's not the strawberry season, and geez, I've got kids, not the strawberry season, <coughs> that's all I eat, you know, then we'd be in trouble. But what does Woolies do through their supply chain management? They're able to source, which is not logistics, it's sourcing, it's part of supply chain management, supply chain management, sourcing, logistics. It's able to source strawberries from the Northern Hemisphere when it's in season and have them all year round. Because there are many suppliers, especially international suppliers these days, businesses need to be aware of a thing called lead time. That is the time it takes from a supply being ordered to when it's delivered. And this comes into like JIT or JIC. Just in time, just in case. You want it with those strawberries, they're perishable items. You want to make sure that you're using FIFO, first in, first out. And we'll get into this stuff later. It's not today's lesson, but you want to also make sure that you've got enough there, JIC, advantage of holding additional stock. 
but you don't have too much stock with strawberries. But you need to think about how long it takes for the strawberries to be delivered to you. All right, the first part of supply chain management, probably the biggest part, but it's not the same as I said before. Logistics, what is this thing? It's a term broadly referring to the distribution, but also includes transportation, the use of storage, warehousing and distribution centers, and material handling and packaging. I didn't say sourcing there. It's not part of logistics. Now again, you need to know what logistics is. I like that definition. Thank you, BSIA textbook. Very good. Okay, I think that's from them. I like that definition. But you need to also say, okay, I can define this crap, what logistics is. How's it a strategy? How does storage? Well, how's that a strategy? Well, if you have perishable items that need to be refrigerated, you don't store them correctly, it's not refrigerated, then what happens to the quality? It deteriorates. If you do have them frozen or refrigerated, what happens to the cost? Well, that will be higher. So how you store the product, the logistics, which is part of that supply chain management, is a strategy. Warehousing, AWTs, automatic warehouse trucks. They're replacing these traditional forklift uh, drivers, okay? And they just are computers that move everything around where they need to go, these big automated forklifts. Again, automated warehouse trucks. They are expensive to start with, so cost goes up. But over time, you don't have to pay the workers to be forklift operators. So it's another strategy to implement this AWT technology. Again, part of logistics as a strategy of supply chain management. So you define it and you say how it's a strategy. All right, e-commerce is the next one. But before we get to e-commerce, to remember when we're talking about supply chain management, we can be talking about sourcing, getting things more cheaply around the world. Okay, that is something that is part of supply chain management. All right, and that can lower costs as well. All right, e-commerce is another part of supply chain management. It allows businesses to source, to get their supplies electronically online, often in real time. It will often inform the business that its raw materials are too low. So Maccas with their pickles or their gherkins, it's too low, it's too low. It automatically send to their suppliers. Dude, lady, hopefully that's PC to say that these days, whatever's, we need more pickles and they will be delivered automatically through e-commerce from their various suppliers. E-commerce has allowed a business to cut the cost of how it sources overseas supplies and e-commerce works in well with obviously supply chain management sourcing has vastly improved the supply chain management process. You need to be aware of what B2B means. B2B interactions are business to business interactions. They occur between business and other businesses, the businesses suppliers, Maccas, Pickles Farmers, in the previous example. Supplier businesses can have real time access information on stock levels through e-commerce of the receiving business. Pickle farmers can have real-time access on, you know, meat supplies, pickles, sources that Macca's needs and so on. And they can send more stock when the levels in the business fall. So then Macca's can have JIT just in time, don't have to store as much of the product because they feel comfortable that their suppliers will be able to help them out. Now, this is a great assistance in the supply chain management as there does not need to be formal requests when stock levels fall. If you've made an agreement when they get the certain amounts, automatically those pickles will come, those beef burgers will come, tomacas and so on, all right? And it's very good for the business, for both businesses, but especially Maccas. All right, global sourcing. Again, logistics, e-commerce and sourcing, major parts of S. CM, supply chain management. Global sourcing is where a business seeks to find the most cost efficient location for manufacturing a product, even if the location is overseas, and often it is these days. By locating closer to the raw materials or where they, can, where they source of cheap labor, they can get a source of cheap labor, a business can achieve lower cost. So if you have uh, your product sourced from overseas, especially in developing nation, labor costs are cheaper, that's an advantage for you. 
which performance objective does that meet? Having access to cheap, developing, third world, still developing, yeah, countries' labour. Cost performance objective. Yeah. So that's one of the ways to be able to meet that. Many global businesses can choose this strategy and even have a global web of operations that exploit, and it's probably true, exploit is the term, exploit the cost advantages offered by the location of cheap resources in a number of different countries. Now, there may be an additional incentive of low rates of tax. Some countries have next to no taxes to encourage global businesses to set up in these countries to try and stimulate that local economy. So you know what global sourcing is? Getting your products, sourcing your products in different countries all around the world like a global spider web. Yeah? How's it a strategy? It's an effective strategy because the cost of inputs are now cheaper, meaning that performance objective, okay? Um, and therefore, it is a useful strategy of supply chain management. All right, guys, thanks again for listening and see you next time.